Hello guys, welcome on Tesla Adventures. In this video, I'll be uh, teaching you the type 3 problems of kinematics rectilinear motion, which are based on the <coughs> equations of motion and the motion under the effect of gravity. We'll be also deriving the equations of motion by calculus method in this video. And uh, we'll be uh, discussing the distance traveled by the particle in nth second in this video. So let us start with the first equation of motion. So first equation of motion is V is equal to U plus AT. And in this equation of motion, you can see that V is the velocity <coughs> after time T. And uh, we call it as final velocity. And U is the velocity before this time T. We call it as initial velocity. And A is the acceleration during this time T. We call this, it as acceleration. So first of all, uh, we have to write down the acceleration A as dv by dt, we all know. And dv is equal to a dt. Integrating both the sides, the limit of v would be from u to v. And the integration of dv is v minus u. I'll, I have uh, substituted the limits. And this is 0 to t, so it is a t. So v is equal to u plus a t. This is the equation of motion, first equation of motion. Now, sign conventions are very important. So, sign conventions, let us discuss the sign conventions. That, let us uh, assume, we have to assume the direction of u to be positive. And the opposite direction of u is negative which means that if a stone is thrown in the upward direction then we can assume u uh, positive and we can assume the upward direction to be positive so we can write down this equation of motion as v is equal to u which is positive minus gt minus is due to the fact that g is in the downward direction so will not be applying the vector on this because we have substituted the direction. So v will be equal to u minus gt. So what I am saying is the fact that whenever you have to decide the sign convention for a first equation of motion, then uh, we always assume the direction of uh, initial velocity uh, u positive and then uh, the quantities which are in the opposite direction of u we assume them as negative. For example, that you can uh, see that if a ball is being dropped from some height like that, u is 0, then uh, at any instant of time, if u is 0, then you can assume the direction of a as positive. So if initial velocity is 0, then uh, acceleration is all obviously in the downward direction g and therefore we can assume the downward direction to be positive so we can write down v is equal to gt so this is uh, the sign conventions and the first equation of motion now let us move on the second equation of motion you can uh, you know obviously that s is equal to ut plus half a d square is the second equation of motion where u is the initial velocity a is the acceleration and s is the total displacement uh, traveled during t time. So if t is, let's suppose, 4 seconds, then we can say that s is the total displacement traveled by the body in 4 seconds. Some uh, some students get confused about s, that whether it is a distance or displacement. So I will uh, I'm telling you that s is uh, the displacement traveled by the body in time t. So it could be negative, it could be positive as well. Now, now uh, to derive this equation, we have to write down v as uh, ds by dt, we know that. And as we have already derived the equation 1, so we can write down v as u plus 
प्लस ए टी सो इट इज इक्वल टू डी एस बाई डी टी सो डी एस इज इक्वल टू यू प्लस ए टी इन टू डी टी लिमिट्स आर फ्रॉम जीरो टू एस एंड हेयर लिमिट्स आर फ्रॉम जीरो टू टी दिस इज एस एंड दिस इज यू टी प्लस हाफ ए टी स्क्वायर बिकॉज द इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ टी डी टी इज टी स्क्वायर बाय टू सो दिस इज द सेकेंड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन एंड अगेन द साइन कन्वेंशंस आर द फैक्ट दैट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ यू डायरेक्शन ऑफ यू इज टेकन टू बी पॉजिटिव एंड द डायरेक्शन विच आर अपोजिट टू यू आर टेकन टू बी नेगेटिव सो दिस इज द साइन कन्वेंशन फॉर अप्लाइंग द सेकेंड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन नाउ लेट अस मूव ऑन द थर्ड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन इन थर्ड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन वी कैन डिराइव द स्केलर फॉर्म ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन एज वी नो दैट ए इज इक्वल टू वी डी वी बाई डी एस ओके सो द वैक्टर फॉर्म ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन इज ए डॉट डी एस इज इक्वल टू वी डॉट डी वी ओके सो इफ वी विश टू डिराइव इन वैक्टर फॉर्म देन वी कैन यूज दिस वन सो दिस इज इंटीग्रेशन बोथ द साइड्स एंड लिमिट वुड बी फ्रॉम यू टू वी and here it would be from 0 to s so this is a dot s and here it would be v dot v minus u dot u divided by 2 so v dot v is equal to u dot u plus 2 a dot s this is the equation of motion third equation of motion and uh, v dot v is v square u dot u is u square and this is 2 as cos theta where theta is the angle between a and s so if we are uh, obviously we are studying the rectilinear motion so in our case if the angle is either 0 degree or it is 180 degree so for 0 degree a is parallel to s so it is u square plus 2s and for 180 degree uh, this equation would be v square is equal to u square minus 2s so in third equation of motion u does not decides the direction of uh, the positive direction obviously and uh, you can also see that v square would always be negative irrespective of the fact that the direction of v is in the direction which we have assumed positive or negative v square will always be positive u square will always be positive but this sign can be positive or negative uh, if acceleration and displacement are in same direction then this sign would be positive and if acceleration and displacement are in different directions then this sign would be negative for example let us see a case that if we have thrown a ball with some velocity u in the upward direction then at some point in the ascending motion if its velocity is v and this displacement of this height is h so we can say that v square will be equal to u square plus now you can see that the acceleration is in downward direction while the displacement of the ball is in upward direction so there would be a negative sign here because the acceleration and displacement are opposite to each other so it would be a minus 2 uh, h into g okay 2 g h or uh, we can say that if we have thrown a ball from a building this is a ball which is thrown from a building and it would go like that and come to the ground so you can see that uh, the initial velocity is u in the upward direction and uh, while writing the third equation of motion v square this is v so v square will be equal to u square now you can see that acceleration is in the downward direction and the net displacement of the ball is also in the downward direction as the ball has traveled a distance of h in the downward direction net displacement okay so both displacement and acceleration are in downward direction so there would be a positive sign this would be 2g uh, h but in uh, this case if we apply the second equation of motion 
then you can see that it would be uh, in second equation of motion we always know that the direction of u is always taken as positive so u is in upward direction so we can take the upward direction as positive and obviously the net displacement is in the downward direction minus h so we can take this net displacement to be negative so it would be uh, minus h would be equal to ut minus half gt square because acceleration is all also in the downward direction and if we apply the th first equation in this case then you can see that velocity is in the downward direction so minus v will be equal to u and minus gt so this would be the first equation of motion in this case now now let us move forward to this case in which uh, we have to find out the distance traveled in nth second now there is a, a huge difference between the total distance traveled in the t seconds or the distance traveled in the nth second th seconds for example we all watch cricket and we can relate to it we can see that if uh, team india posted a total of 80 runs in 8 overs then uh, the total runs scored in 8 overs is 80 this is the s which we have already studied in the equation 3 equation of motion which is uh, second equation of motion s barabar, s is equal to ut plus half t square and in this case if let's suppose we have to find out the score uh, in uh, the number of runs scored in 8th over so for that we have to subtract the total runs of 8 overs and total runs of 7 overs so let's suppose that if in 7 overs there would be 72 runs and in 8 overs there are 80 runs then the number of runs scored in 8th over is 80 minus 72 which is 8 so the same thing is uh, in this part that this is the displacement traveled in the nth second okay so what we have to do that displacement traveled in nth second would be equal to displacement travel in n seconds minus displacement travels in n minus 1 seconds so s nth would be equal to u into n uh, plus half a into n square minus uh, the displacement travel in n minus 1 seconds so it would be u into n minus 1 uh, plus half a into n minus 1 whole square so s nth would be equal to u n plus half a n square minus u n plus u minus half a into n square minus 1 whole square so you can see that it is uh, cancelled and s nth will be half a n square plus u minus half a n square minus a by 2 plus this is this would be n and this would be plus a into n so this is cancelled so s nth is equal to u plus i am taking out a by 2 common and it would be minus 1 plus 2n so s nth is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 okay so this is the displacement traveled in nth seconds okay now we uh, some people say that this is a dimensionally incorrect formula this is not the correct one uh, because uh, there is this displacement and this is velocity and this is acceleration but you should never forget that uh, there is a one also which is multiplying with this u because this is n minus one so one is also the time this is second so if uh, there is one then its unit would be second and therefore u into second velocity into sec time will be dimensionally equal to the displacement and the same thing is with this one that x there is also a one in this case so this is time and there would be time so at square is also the displacement 
now uh, we have uh, some direct formulas which we can remember so uh, this is the uh, first case in which a ball is thrown in the upward direction and at top velo top its velocity becomes zero and then it comes to the bottom now first of all we have to find out the h max so we can find out the h max by third equation of motion <coughs> v square is equal to u square plus 2s so v is zero on the top point u square is u square and obviously the acceleration due to gravity is in the downward direction while the displacement of the ball is in upward direction so there would be a negative minus 2g h max so h max will be equal to u square by 2g this is the maximum height now the now we have to find out the time to ascend so time to ascend can be uh, calculated by using v is equal to u plus at. So at top point v is 0, initially u was u and minus because g is in the downward direction and t is th the time of ascent. So ta will be u by g. Okay, And uh, the time to descend can be calculated by this h max that time to descend is equal to under root of 2h by g. Now you can see that if we write down the equation of motion in descending motion, in descending motion, if we apply s is equal to ut plus half a t square, then s is h, I am taking the downward direction as positive because I have mentioned earlier that if initial velocity is zero, then you can assume the direction of acceleration to be positive. And in the descending motion, the initial velocity was zero. So we have assumed the direction of acceleration due to gravity in the downward direction as positive. So h is equal to half g t square. So time to descend t d will be equal to under root of 2 h by g. Now td is equal to under root of 2, now h is u square by 2g, this is u square by 2g and this is g. So you can see that time of descent is equal to u by g as well as time of ascent was u by g. We have uh, already calculated this time. So time of ascent and time of descent are equal. So the total time of flight is 2u by g. And therefore, if uh, we can write down this formula, then we can also say that time of ascent will also be equal to under root 2h by g because they are equal. If that stone is attaining a h height uh, from the ground. And uh, this total time can be also written as uh, t is equal to 2 under root 2h by g. Okay. Now, uh, let us see some more uh, uh, direct formulae so first of all uh, now we can see that uh, this velocity is u and I have written in the previous page that it would return to the ground with same velocity u so no <coughs> now how I can uh, say this that a stone which is projected with some speed would return to the same height with the same speed but a downward velocity so uh, I can apply uh, v square is equal to u square plus 2s. So v square is equal to u square plus 2 into a into 0 because that com complete uh, displacement is 0 because it has attained a h height in the upward direction then it descended in the downward direction. Therefore net displacement is 0. Therefore we can say v is equal to u. Speed is same. Okay, so the stone which is projected with some velocity u would return to the ground with the same velocity u. Okay, and, and ground means the uh, point of projection. Now let us move further. Now let us see that if a stone is dropped from some height h, then the time it would take to come down, we have already discussed that this time would be equal to under root of 2h by g. So you should always remember that at the time of, in the case of dropping, the time uh, it would take to descend down by a height of h would be under root 2h by g. And the velocity, 
which uh, with which it would uh, come to the ground v can be calculated by v square is equal to u square plus 2s so v square is equal to 0 plus 2 into now acceleration due to gravity is in the downward direction and the displacement of the ball is also in the downward direction so this is plus 2g into h so v is equal to under root of 2gh this is the speed with which it would come to the ground so these two things are important in this case now in this case you can see that uh, there is a stone which is dropped from some height and we have to find out the ratio of time it would take to descend down each one meter slot and also the uh, displacement ratio of the displacement it would travel in each one second slot so first of all let us talk about the time ratio in the first case so we can uh, see that if a stone is being dropped let us discuss on the new page that if a stone is being dropped from some height then for to travel one meter first one meter it will take time t1 and t1 would be equal to under root 2 h by g where h is 1 now to travel the other uh, one meter let us suppose that time taken is t2 so what we are doing that we'll uh, consider that the total time it would take to travel this two meter will be under root of 2 into 2 by g minus the time it has taken to travel this one meter would be under root of 2 into 1 by g so t2 would be equal to uh, root 2 by g into root 2 minus 1 now t3 this is 1 meter so t3 will be equal to under root of 2 into 3 by g what i have done i have calculated the total time to descend this 3 meters and I would subtract the time uh, taken to descend by these 2 meters. So it would be under root of 2 into 2 by g. So this is root 2 by g into root 3 minus root 2. So you can see the sequence and therefore you can see that this value of c will be equal to uh, under root of 2 by g. Okay. So if we uh, find out the ratio of these times then c would be cancelled out and this would be the ratio and similarly for displacement we can see that the displacement traveled in the first second would be half a t square where t is 1 and g a is g so this would be 5 and the displacement traveled in the other one second would be the total displacement in two seconds which is half uh, a is uh, 10 and t is uh, 2 so it would be 4 into 10 by 2 this is 20 so 20 is the displacement traveled in total 2 seconds so that displacement traveled in the second 1 second second 1 second okay slot so would be 20 minus 5 which is 50 and so on it would be 25 35 and so on so the ratio of these times would be 1 is to 3 is to 5 is to 7 and so on okay so this is the uh, important uh, concept now let us see that what happens if somebody throws a ball uh, in the upward direction from a building and ball comes to the ground so the main thing is the calculation of time period and maximum height attained so for maximum height we can say that this h max is equal to v naught square by 2g and obviously from ground it would be equal to h max plus h so this is very easy but to find out the time taken by the stone so we have to apply s is equal to ut plus half at square now s is the displacement of the stone till it comes to the ground so you can see that initially stone was on the roof of this building which is uh, which is of a height h and finally the stone has attained uh, uh, stone has came down to the ground so the net displacement of stone in the y direction is minus h because the direction of initial velocity is taken as positive v naught is taken as positive therefore the displacement traveled by the stone is in the downward direction h and hence i am referring it as negative h so minus h is equal to v naught into t minus half gt square because g is also in the negative direction 
सो जी टी स्क्वायर माइनस टू वी नॉट टी एंड माइनस टू एच इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो द टाइम टेकन बाय द स्टोन विद बी प्लस टू वी नॉट प्लस माइनस अंडर रूट बी स्क्वायर विच इज फोर वी नॉट स्क्वायर एंड प्लस दिस इज एट जी एच डिवाइडेड बाय टू जी सो यू कैन टेक आउट टू कॉमन एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो सी That's that this term is greater than two v naught, so time cannot be negative. Hence, we will ignore this negative sign and we would take only positive one. So this I am taking two as positive, uh, two as common. So it is v naught plus under root v naught square plus two g h divided by g. So this is the time taken by the stone to reach the ground. You can also memorize this formula. now now let us discuss that what happens if uh, this motion is affected by the air resistance so we can see that if uh, there is air in this atmosphere then uh, the time taken by the stone to reach the top can be calculated by simple equation of motion first equation of motion and uh, it is given in the question that the acceleration of uh, stone due to this air resistance is a okay now now we know that uh, when stone goes up so this is the ascending motion so when stone goes up then uh, the air resistance and the acceleration due to gravity would act in the downward direction therefore they would add up and the final velocity of a stone is zero so we can uh, find out v is equal to u plus at And v is zero, u is u, and minus a g plus a into t. T is the time to ascend. So time to ascend would be u by g plus a. Okay, and the maximum height attained by the stone is h. So h would be equal to u square by two g plus a. You just need to. Uh, Modify the formula u square by g by replacing g with g plus a. This would be the maximum height attained. Now the time to descend, t descend, would be under root of two g two h by g. But in the case of air, we know that if air is acting on the stone, then uh, g would be acting in the downward direction, while a would be acting in the upward direction. So the net acceleration in the downward direction would be g minus a. so time to descend from a height h would be under root of 2 h by g minus a and the time to ascend in terms of h would be under root of 2 h by g plus a so in most of the questions you are being uh, asked with the ratio of time of ascend and time of descent so time of ascend upon time of descent uh, is in the ratio of under root of g minus a upon of g plus a okay and this is uh, also evident that the speed with which stone was projected uh, will not be equal to the speed with which it would come down you can easily see that there would be some loss of energy due to due to the air resistance and the speed with which stone descended can be calculated by the formula v is equal to under root of 2gh but now you have to uh, change replace the g with g minus a because in the descending motion the acceleration net acceleration in the downward direction is g minus a so this is g minus a into h so you can calculate this v from this formula so these were the basics of uh, this motion under the effect of gravity and equations of motion in the next video i'll be bringing you Uh, the numericals of level 1 and level 2 which are based on this type 3 problems thank you